Hey everyone, thank y'all for joining us for our Beef Brunch News Update on Tuesday, August 9th. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Vince to do our update in Central and South Louisiana. Yeah, thank y'all for having me today. Uh, you know, we, we've been praying and, and hoping for rain all summer and spring and summer and uh, wow, have the tables turned here the last 10 to 12 days in Central Louisiana and as you go further south, uh, we've we've got rain, you know, we've got row crop farmers with corn, grain, sorghum, and rice that are trying to be harvested, and um, they're in and out of the fields where they can and can't, and uh, it's, it's been a challenge to get it grown now to get it harvested, but um, some of the, you know, our pastures are, are picking up in terms of, of cattle, um, our, our hay fields, those uh, who are reluctant to pay that high dollar on some fertilizer prices, which those prices have, have softened some, but it's still uh, most of your blended fertilizer running from eight fifty to nine hundred dollars for per ton. Uh, there's some talk of some six hundred and fifty dollar urea. Uh, so we're we're getting some nice growth out of some hay fields right now uh, for those who who have elected to go on and put some fertilizer out. So uh, that's one uh, one pie in the sky, so to speak, uh, that we you know, will get a, a decent hay cutting, and, and hopefully we get you know the a uh, little bit of compensation from the rain, and uh, that we get a break to do it in the fall. So you never know with this. Hurricane season, uh, local forecasters say there's a first tropical depression coming off the African coast, and uh, here we go. You know, it's it's getting ready to get cranked off, and uh, that's always a major concern for South Louisiana uh, in the coastal regions up up into the central part of the state. You know, as bad as uh, Delta, Laura and Delta were, they they reaped havoc across the state you know, from south to north when when they it took place two years ago. So uh, who knows what we're in store for, but. Um, you know, watching some of the local markets, calf prices on the on the uptick, and uh, I'm sure Ashley or or Lee will cover some of that uh, in 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 Jason's absence. But um, you know, kill cow prices have kind of have kind of softened some, uh, but the calf prices look like they're they're moving in the right direction. Um, so hopefully that that continues. Um, some producer, you know, getting getting the tail end of their breeding season, their bulls uh, out and up close to headquarters to uh, Get things sustained. Uh, there's going to be some palpating herds here before long to see what's what's bred and what's not bred going into the fall and winter season. Um, there's a, quite a bit of a demand for hay uh, going to Texas, um, which most Louisiana producers uh, probably at this point have not made uh, you know the amounts of hay they need to sustain their winter feeding period. Uh, but there is there is considerable amount of hay going to Texas. Uh, that being said, some of that's probably marginal. To some degree, it's it's you know with the cost of fertilizer, I would think you're not going to get many truckloads of fertilized hay going out of state right now until uh, some of the, the local needs are met. But uh, that that might be the case uh, later on. So with that, it's it's pretty mundane. You know, people are uh, kind of reaching for the stars on on some pasture control options uh, as far as weeds are concerned. Uh, it's the time of the year if you got uh, woody woody plants and and trees and brush and stuff to control. As we move into the fall months, that's the ideal time to take those uh, tallow trees out or, or locally here to chicken trees and maybe some of the scrub oaks and uh, briars and stuff. It's, it's the, really the ideal time of the year moving into the season change. Uh, and it's noticeably, we've talked about this the last two uh, news updates that days are getting shorter. It's, it's taking a little bit longer in the morning for daylight to come and uh, the afternoons are getting shorter. So, um, so we, we're upon a season change. With that being said, it's it's pretty mundane, and I think, you know, generally the producers are looking forward to this uptick in, in the market. So hopefully that that sustains through the spring run, hitting some of the barns. It's unfortunate that our friends over to the west in Texas and even into Oklahoma and some of the drought-stricken areas are facing with they're having to uh, sell early wean calves that that are light. And I was just tuned in to some of the auctions in in Missouri and some in in Texas on this uh, cattle auctions, USA cattle auctions .com, and uh, that they, they're bringing a pretty healthy price at some of these uh, auction sites. So hopefully that holds on. We definitely need it. And and uh, and and folks need to, you know, put get a get a few things paid for and maybe make some profit here down the road and uh, with some softening uh, fertilizer prices and, uh, you know, cost of doing business in general. So it's about all I have. It's, it's pretty mundane across South Louisiana and central Louisiana. Uh, just just kind of waiting on the season change. Uh, ryegrass, Ashley, you and I have discussed that in detail to some, you know, here lately. And 
Um, it looks like there's an ample supply of ryegrass seed at, at the local dealers. Uh, price is going to be about where it was last year. Um, but if you haven't booked your seed or spoke to some of your local uh, dealers and, and uh, dealer representatives, uh, you might want to do that because uh, where seed is short, they, they're not going to hold on to it for a very long period after the, the masses of their producers have planted. So uh, get that spoken for and get that secured and um, you know concentrate on on planting the the high spots on your farms ranches whatever you want to label them as uh, where you can concentrate and get the most benefit out of fertilizer when you do fertilize it and if you're not planning on treating it like a crop uh, to get the, the most benefit out of it uh, maybe stick to you know haying and using some supplement in the tub or some uh, salt and meal or something of that nature uh, with the high cost of doing business but that's where we're at right now, and it's it's just we're getting into that fall season, into the winter feeding period, and needing to make some decisions on where we go from here. But that's about all I got. Thank you, sir. Um, before I turn it over to Lee, I'm going to go ahead and touch on a few things since Vince mentioned them. Um, one, I'll fess up now, and I did not do y'all justice or Jason justice, and I did not put markets together this week. Um, so maybe Lee will have a little bit on that. Um, the second thing Vince mentioned, um, tallow trees, he mentioned ryegrass, bull management or pulling these bulls off and everything else. So, um, one of the events that I'll talk about later is going to be our Dean Lee, uh, virtual field day. And we actually have several of those topics in our virtual field day that's going to come out on August 10th. So, um, just to go ahead and put that bug in your ear and I'll elaborate on that here in just a little bit. Uh, Lee, I know we could use the rain that Vince and them are getting down there up in our northern part of the state, but I'll go ahead and turn it over to you for our Northwest region update. Thank you, Ashley. Very glad to be with you all here today. Uh, hot and dry for the most part is is the uh, is what news up this way. Um, you know, r really and truly, we 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 sometimes refer to droughts as pockets of drought. You'll hear that referred to as uh, there's pockets of drought in the country. Um, I'm going to flip that around right now. And in northwest and portions of north central Louisiana, there are pockets of green, uh, few and far between. Uh, drought is pretty widespread up this way. Um, we've seen it expand a little bit on the drought monitor in the last week or two. Um, but there ha it, it, it's kind of a, a odd uh, set up, I guess you would say, because there has been some some rainfall just about the last eight or 10 days. You pull up the radar on your phone uh, late afternoon time and you're going to see some showers across northern Louisiana. But the and, and I think they're more prevalent in northeast Louisiana and a little farther south than the I-20 corridor. But um, they're they're few and far between but those areas that have been catching a random uh, shower pop-up thunderstorm have benefited greatly from it but once again and I, I mentioned this in our last news update i'm going to mention it again right now my goodness the 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 southwest corner of uh, of our region the northwest region that being DeSoto parish sabine parish uh, the, those folks are, are are really in a tough shape uh, for the most part down that way. A lot of hay being fed uh, across the region uh, to some cattle that, that just ran out of grass or droughted out, plain and simple. And that was my next comment that I wrote down. Some folks are in trouble. Um, that They're having to make some hard decisions, weaning some calves early, trying to get some pressure off these, uh, off these pastures and whatnot. As being stated, you know, here we are, it's right in the 98, 99 degrees outside the office window here right now, but uh, ryegrass and other winter forages aren't far from our minds, uh, and, and we're not far from that time. So be getting it on your mind, be getting them booked. Uh, same thing holds true what Vince stated for Central and South Louisiana. Uh, talked to several dealers, doesn't seem like there's going to be much problem getting the seed, but I, I think that you'll see an increased demand as far as planting, uh, for especially as we get farther into the late summer and early fall period. I think there's a lot of people that are kind of 
sitting on the fence as far as how much ryegrass they're going to plant. I think they're kind of holding out hope for a last cutting that will kind of redeem them, that will uh, uh, be able to scratch up enough hay to, to, to soften the blow, so to speak, for those winter feeding needs. And I, I think that if, uh, if that last cutting doesn't become fruitful, I think you're going to see a huge rush towards ryegrass. Um, and so it's, it's good to go on and get that stuff spoke for. While we're on the topic of hay, I do want to make mention in pastures as well. Uh, talked to a couple of producers here and there with questions on some Johnson grass hay and grazing some some uh, Johnson grass uh, pastures and whatnot. Just be, be cognizant about that prussic acid poisoning and, and uh, nitrogen uh, nitrogen toxicity on that as well. And uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on that. That take up too much time, but uh reach out to any one of us and we can kind of help you point you in the right directions it's uh it, it's something we need to be cognizant of the, especially with the drought conditions being what they are up this way when we're talking about grazing on some nitrogen uh, some uh some johnson grass hay fields that traditionally we would hay or haying those those johnson grass fields it, it, it's definitely something we need to keep on our minds uh, a lot of cows, uh, cows continue to be moving. A lot of calves being moved, as I stated, a lot of spring-born calves are, are, are finding their way to town and they're being met with uh, surprisingly strong uh, demand and prices. So that, that is a, um, a silver lining, I guess, in the cloud that a lot of times when we're faced with these hard decisions, early weaning calves and getting them gone early, um, it, it's met with lower prices and that's just not the case right now. We are seeing that. Uh, I, I didn't have anything prepared cattle market wise, but I will make a couple of comments there. Actually, nothing on the level of what Jason provides everybody. Uh, but um, we're, we're, we're seeing some resurgence in, in um, not only in these cash prices we're getting on calves, but also these feeder cattle cash prices. And now late in last week, uh, and, and rolling on into this week, we've kind of seen a, a resurgence in some futures market prices on feeder cattle and on fat cattle. You talk to folks in the industry and they kind of feel like this uh, fat cattle price is live and on the futures markets is kind of what's holding us back from a, from a, 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 a true uh, a, a, a true resurgence of these cattle prices that if those things would fall into place and if if these folks that are got cattle on feed and uh finishing out in the feedlot were able to squeeze just a few more dollars out of these packers on these fat cattle uh that we would probably see some higher calf prices even than what we're seeing now but it is kind of serving as a damper a little bit on the market which i hope is removed as we go through this week of, of trading uh, and, and as these fat cattle getting marketed, uh, already seeing some preliminary results and most asking prices on these fat cattle are higher. And it does look like the, the case holds true also with killing cows. Looks like those prices are, are, are creeping up just a little bit. I'm not going to say that we're making gains head over, head over tails, but I, I do think that uh, we're, we're trying to build a market back on those as well. Um, and the final thing that I'm going to touch on, I'm trying to be a, a little bit more abbreviated than I normally am. I, I go back and listen to these reports sometimes and I tend to ramble a good bit. So I'm trying to kind of stay on point and on task, so to speak. Um, we're, we're talking about these prices of cattle and I talk to cattle producers all over and, and one of the, uh, one of the uh, unifying grumbles, I guess, in the industry, especially in Louisiana, in my corner of the state at least, is uh, folk, folks will, uh, will grumble about the price locally of, of calves when they're selling versus what they see on their phone. We're all connected now on, on computers, on the internet, with cell phones. We can, um, we can see almost instantaneous uh, auction results from sale barns in Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, Vince said he was watching some northern auctions earlier today. Uh, we know what's going on in other parts of the country and if you if you follow these things, you know uh, that those prices are a little bit above where we're at. 
and in some in some cases a lot above where we're at down in Louisiana. Um, and it's especially true the farther north you go and the farther west you go. And a lot of that has to do, there's several factors, and this would more be a talk for a, a beef brunch educational series than a news update, but I do want to hit on a couple of things that's, that's really uh, kind of exaggerating these uh, price differentials between what we're seeing CAD bringing down here versus what you may have seen on that uh, superior livestock uh, uh, video sale last week or at a, a livestock barn in Nebraska or so, so on and so forth. The first thing, first and foremost, is are, are you comparing your cattle versus what a truck load, truck load lot is selling for? Um, all my life, we've seen the movement to marketing in truck load lots becoming more and more crucial to the, getting those premium prices. And ladies and gentlemen, it, it's getting to be more and more so that if you can't come up with a load, well, which a load is, you know, 48, 50,000 pounds of like type kind and sex cattle, um, you know, it's it's very hard to market those cattle in times. You get the premiums on those truckload lots. So that's one thing. The, uh, the, the other thing that's definitely coming into play is the price of fuel. Because it doesn't matter if uh, you sell your cattle here in Louisiana or if you sell your cattle in Oklahoma or uh, Texas or Kansas or wherever, somebody's paying that fuel bill. That's either you paying the hauling or that's whoever's buying your cattle. It takes some money to get out to their background and yards or a feedlot on those bigger caves. So I, I, I called around to some friends in the industry and got, got some kind of average quotes for y'all. And some of y'all probably, this, this isn't news to y'all, but uh, some of you may not have shipped any cattle or anything lately. So the price per mile and that's price per loaded mile right now on a truck load, that'd be what we call a pot deck trailer, 18 wheeler trailer, is uh, averaging about 550 a loaded mile. Five dollars and fifty cents for every mile they got your cattle on the truck. Uh, when you back it down from there on down to ground loads to gooseneck trailers, you're talking anywhere from four to five dollars, depending on the size of the of the trailer and 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 how far the the haul is on all this. What I'm telling y'all this for is it takes money to get your cash from Louisiana to their final, uh, to not even their final destination, the next destination on that production uh, stage, uh, next stage of production, so to speak. So that is uh, that is something to be cognizant of. It's costing these folks money to get their, get your cattle from Louisiana, wherever you're selling that in the state, out to this next location. Final thing, and I guess word of caution for everybody when comparing these sale receipts from these northern sales uh, to, to what's going on here is uh, the type of cattle. Uh, we're, we're talking about different types of cattle up there, plain and simple. Um, we, we know that in Louisiana, we have to have that Brahmin influence to make a go of it in our cow herd. It's crucial. Uh, they don't have to have it up there. Uh, you, you, you've just got kind of a more English based Angus type cows, maybe some Charlay or any kind of cross of the, of the two. And um, generally speaking, they just got a different type of cattle than what, we're, what we deal with here. So I, I went into all that, just all that to say this, just be careful. It's always good to learn more about the markets and to keep track with what's going on in, in, in these other states where there's some big auction markets, but just be, just be too, uh, don't, don't be too eager to compare what your cattle are bringing down here in Louisiana to what they can bring in other places, uh, to what cattle are bringing in other places, because uh, you may be kind of comparing apples to oranges, folks. With that, Ashley, I'm going to shut up and turn it back over to you. Thank you. No, I think those are all really good points that we need to stop and think about, because we do share some frustrations uh, as with any industry, but sometimes we just don't realize some of those things that go into that. Um, so as I said earlier, I, I failed y'all on not getting the market report together today, and I'm sorry for that. Um, a few things to touch on in terms of events moving forward. So today, when this news update goes out, August 9th, uh, we have Dr. Ryan Walker with Texas A&M AgriLife is going to be talking to us about um, relationships between cow size and profitability. 
So some of y'all might remember Ryan from when he was a researcher and professor at the Hill Farm Research Station for us. Um, he's since been to both Noble and to Texas A&M. So we asked him to come back on and give our webinar that will again be live today at 1030 um, on August 9th. So if you missed the live viewing of it, we will get that recording up hopefully before the end of the week. You can always see all that information on lsuagcenter.com forward slash beef brunch, or um, if you go to YouTube and do LSU Ag Center dash livestock, it will be on there. Earlier, I mentioned our um, Dean Lee Research Station uh, virtual field day. That is going to launch tomorrow, Wednesday, August 10th. So again, August 10th. Um, so this field day consists of horticulture, agronomy, beef cattle and forages, um, a bunch of different YouTube videos. I'll have the link for that in our podcast and video descriptions as well. In terms of our beef cattle, as we mentioned earlier, uh, so Dr. Ron Strahan came in and he did a demonstration on controlling tallow trees and pastures. Um, we have Dr. Wink Allison talking about how to use lime to improve uh, pH on critical pastures. Vince came in and did one on uh, planting and planting ryegrass for our 2022 season. And then I have one on bull management during the off season. So those are the four videos that we have for you in terms of beef and forage for that. But for those of you interested in horticulture, as well as um, those of you that have row crops, we do have updates on those as well. And so you can see all of those on the website that I have linked for y'all. Um, we've been mentioning our Southeast Region Master Cowman Program that Dr. Don Gentry is hosting. The registration for that closes on August 15th. Uh, I'm not sure how many spots she has available, but I know that spots were limited. So um, we've been putting, putting this in our video and podcast description. We're leaving it on there. All that registration information and her contact information is there as well. And then Jason has mentioned this before, and we'll keep reminding you, but um, fast forward to September, which will probably be here before we know it. But September 15th, that is a Thursday. That is going to be our Northeast Beef and Forage Field Day. That's going to be in Bastrop, Louisiana this year. Uh, registration will start at 830. We do need you to register. Lunch is provided. The event's free, but we just need a head count for lunch. So I have that registration link and Jason's email in the video and podcast descriptions as well. Um, so I believe that's all that we have for you today. We hope that you have a great week. I know um, Lee's mentioned this and um, Vince as well. Lee and I are probably a little bit more excited about it than Vince is, but I've been seeing rain chances for the rest of the week at least um, in the farmable area and hopefully pushing a little bit more both northeast and northwest. So still uh, crossing our fingers and saying some prayers that we get some much needed rain in the areas that we do need it in. Uh, we will be back with y'all again in just a couple of weeks.